let's see, when I'm looking through a list of folks that are with us today, welcome to everybody. I know a lot of you have played with us before. I see a lot of new faces, though, so welcome to all of you. I'm glad you decided to join us on this Friday. Welcome to the Elk Finance team. We're going to be getting into the project in the weeds today, so get ready to learn quite a bit about uh, what Elk Finance is up to. Hey, thanks for having us. Really excited to go through this, and he is what you do. You've done your research on Elk. It's a, a great project. Really, the multi-chain future is what we believe in, and currently on, on many chains. I think one of the questions involves that number. So hopefully you did some research on that. Expanding many chains as we go. There's farming in the business, IL protection. So feel free to reach out with some questions and, and good luck to everybody. All right. Season two, game one here begins in three, two, one. The first question, the maximum supply of elk that, were ev that will ever exist across all chains. 42,424,242. Is it 33,000,000? 333,333. And you, know, you can read those other two options. Take your best guess. The answer, of course, you know, I always want to say A, it's the red one, not lettered like you did on an SAT or something, right? Something silly like that. But the correct answer is 42,424,242. I practiced that one. We'll note that with the ElkNet, we will be implementing some sort of burn mechanism. So at some point, it will become deflationary. So that number is going to go down and we'll be burning little bits of elk as the bridge continues to grow in size and scale. Scores. After the very first question, we got layering in first place with 952 close afterwards jad monstro and mrtd logic mert there with 950 mert glad to see you back with us monstro i think this is going to be your game brother what do you think man i i never play so uh i'll mess up at some point don't worry let's go on to question number two here everybody ready elk can currently be moved between is it 12 chains 14 chains 16 chains or 18 chains so if you did your homework on this, I think even at the top of the Elk Finance, they got an awesome video at the top of their uh, their Twitter page. The answer is 16 chains. And so this is quite incredible, right? This is the sort of industry-leading diversity of chains for a single project, I think. Seriously, every time I turn around, there's more chains. That green one, 18 chains, there's eight people. You're going to be right in about a couple of weeks, to be honest. So we've got the big ones coming up very soon, actually. Ethereum Mainnet and Arbitrum are next up on the list. Our development team is just crazy sometimes. We launch six chains in one day recently, which was incredible. They're just pumping out new chain connectivity all the time. It's great. And many of them, I, you know, I've never heard of, and, and we get a kind of ahead of the game. So it's like, oh, let me check out this new chain. I buy the native gas token, do a little bit of farming, and boom, suddenly that chain gets popular and it moons. 4x, 5x on this, this token that I never even heard of just because Elk expanded there earlier than other places. Let's see here. With almost 1,900 points, we got David in the first place, Monstro in second. Risco up here on the scoreboard with 1,872. Murd moving up to fourth, and Pedro on the scoreboard from Elk with 1,864, up 12 places. Thundercat is the highest climber in this last question here. Let's move on to question number three. Which of the following chains is Elk Analytics not available for? You can find all the links on the Elk uh, Finance docs, docs.elk.finance, um, but one of the options here is not yet available, which is it Moon River? Is it Phantom? Is it Optimism? Is it Harmony? And the answer is Optimism at this point in time, but you can find analytics for all these other chains. Y'all have working analytics for as well at this current point in time? Yeah, pretty much everyone that has working subgraphs, almost everyone on the chains, but you know, some things are out of our control. We rely on the subgraphs for that data. Sometimes we to build it ourselves, but with so many chains, it's a bit hard. Sometimes they kind of fall off the map, but in general, the team's working really hard to keep those analytics up and live. But obviously, Optimism, we're not connected with in general at all at this stage yet. In the near future, surely. After the third question, you have Pedro moving into uh -oh. first place. Uh-oh, uh -oh. here he comes. Here he comes. I just want to see if you guys can keep up. <laughs> there he is in second. Mert there in third. Monster in fourth. And Blin with almost 2,500 points there up on the leaderboard. The spread is widening a bit here, but the vast majority on the leaderboard have over 2,600 current point in time and up to 18 places. Stabilio, or Stabilo, sorry, the highest climber recently. Here we go. Oh, question number four. Elk is designed, the token Elk, is designed to achieve all of the following except enable sub-second cross-chain attractions, reduce slippage by a deeper liquidity pairing, provide stable collateral for lending or borrowing, or serve as the governance token for the Elk network. Which of these does not belong? Give you a little bit extra time for this question because the answers are 
little wordy. You got about five seconds remaining. And this is how I drop off the leaderboard. This is one of those ones where I wanted to share everything about elk and had to include an option that wasn't correct. And so I figured that it was distinct enough and all these other things, maybe we could talk a little bit. I'll just open the floor. You guys want to talk about the elk token. It's pretty awesome. The main use for it at this stage is sub-second cross-chain transaction. Elk is what moves value across all the 16 and, and growing chains that we have right now. Average time is about seven. Sometimes it gets a little hung up as out of our control networks get clogged up. But on those cross chain transactions are super fast. And in all of the farms, everything's paired with the ELK token. So that reduces slippage, creates deeper liquidity for those transactions cross chain, also helps protect the price of ELK. We're not farming two stable tokens and earning ELK. So farmers just drop meals and stables and then start dumping the reward token. We are getting ready to launch governance with the ELK token. It's not quite live yet. So maybe that was a little tricky one there. We have been looking at partnerships with outside projects. Okay, Pedro still in first place. Mert moving up to second. He's got an answer streak of four. Blin in third place. David fourth. Arias in fifth place. So let's go ahead with question number five. Here we go. Elk.finance offers educational crypto content through, is it layer three? Is it DeFi training? Is it rabbit hole? Or is it Elk Academy? 10 seconds. All right, and the right answer there is Elk Academy. I don't know if that was too obvious, a little bit of a softball pitch here. I think it's somewhat obvious. You should check it out, though. This is hosted on Medium, right, Pedro? Yeah, yeah it's great. It's just for intro to DeFi, definitely approachable for the average user and for newer users. And nice tips even for people that have been around the block a few times as well. I recommend everybody check over at that Elk Academy on Medium to learn a little bit more. We'll see we're at halfway through the game. Pedro's still in first place. The only thing that changed here is the bottom of the stack. Look who's back. Monstro, CD logic in second blend david and monster on the leaderboard here another three people have, have hit three out of those five questions correctly congratulations to all of you number six here we go elk finance has plans to issue a stable coin called blank to facilitate cross-chain transfers with minimal risk so the stable coin is it called usdt chft usdc or die dai all right, and the answer here is CHFT. And I got to ask Pedro to dig in on this one. I'm really curious to learn more about the stable coin that's on the roadmap here. So CHF is the abbreviation for the Swiss franc. Most stable coins are built around the dollar. We don't need another dollar coin. The dollar is inflationary. You got the Fed. Swiss franc is known as one of the strongest, most secure currencies in the world. What we're going to do is uh, be able to make this coin, the stable coin, via elk staking. That will be able to be sent across chain as well. Instead of sending elk, which is somewhat of a volatile coin at times, you're sending something stable and you don't have to worry about price fluctuation in between or price differences on one chain to the next. Pedro's still in first place. Actually, no movement in the leaderboard. We got everybody gaining points, though. Mert in second place, Blin in third, Day fourth, and Monstro hanging on there and almost to 4,500 points there in fifth place. Monstro, I believe in you. Three players reached an answer streak of four, so they got four out of six questions correct. Let's go on to question number seven. Moose NFTs grant all the following abilities and benefits to... So again, that keyword except you're looking for the one that doesn't belong. These NFTs grant the following abilities. Node operation quality qualification, exclusive governance rights, farming multipliers, or elk airdrops, which one does not belong? And the correct answer here is governance rights. Looks like node operation qualification was a good distractor on this one. I, I just love this. I didn't. I, I held back on saying something in, in halftime, but I think it's really cool that uh, y'all are taking NFTs. And I mean, we all love NFTs for PFPs and all that. We got an awesome project in, in the NFBs. But these sorts of like really direct use cases are, are awesome, I think. We have this elk network coming up on the roadmap here very soon. Some very serious use cases. And you need a moose NFT to operate a node or a pair of nodes. I should say. Maybe you're not going to do it yourself. That's fine. But somebody else wants to and they want that moose. So they'll be maybe able to either buy it from you and or rent it from you. It does offer farming multipliers, airdrops on every new chain that we launch on. Is it also the case that the NFTs give you sort of an expedited uh, impermanent loss protection, right? The impermanent loss protection is a, a slow drip coverage, right? You, you get impermanent loss while you're farming. What happens? is you, you, you earn that coverage a little bit day by day. The moose doubles the speed of that. If you get some big impermanent loss on some token that you went degen mode on, but you have a moose, in half the time you'll be able to claim the impermanent loss coverage. Really just make yourself whole. Even though you're also earning farming rewards from elk, that doesn't offset. Right? So you're earning swap fees, you're earning elk token farming rewards. We're still looking at just the pure impermanent loss of the two tokens that you have, regardless of the other rewards, the swap fees and the elk, it will do impermanent loss coverage based on what you've sustained when you do withdraw. 
last question I had about this before we went on to the next question. You're talking about being able to lend it out. Is that possible now or is this something you're thinking about in the future? That's more future. When yeah. the uh, pair of nodes and nodes are operational and people need access to them in order to stake a node, we'll have to create some market for that. Three questions remaining. We're going to go on to number eight here. It's rather the Moose NFTs. So in this case, we're talking about secondary markets. They are available on, is it three chains, seven chains, five chains, or nine chains? This is a number that is increasing too over time. <laughs> Yeah. I think so. You guys might be catching up to me here. Oh, I got it right. <laughs> five chains. Indeed, five chains you can trade them on. The business development team's constantly working for partnerships so we can have safe secondary markets to sell those moose NFTs. Pedro Stone first, Blin second. Jad moving up to third. David in fourth. Talon also moving up to the leaderboard here in fifth place. ID is the highest climber now. we got two questions remaining in the game here. Let's go on to number nine. The Elknet Bridge has built in, is it yield farming? stablecoin conversion, staking, or gas purchasing. This is a built-in feature to the ElkNet. You got about 10 seconds remaining. And the correct answer here is gas purchasing. This was mentioned a little bit earlier, not directly using, I think, Ooh. this specific language, but this is the idea that you can essentially purchase the purchase in the same transaction that you're sending Elk to a different chain. Is that correct, Pedro? This is such a unique feature, probably my favorite feature, because it's saved my ass so many times. You run out of gas on one <laughs> network, or you're new to a network, you have no gas. How do you get the gas? You've got Elk on one chain, you go to the elk net and you send some elk, one of the elk that you're sending gets swapped for gas on another chain in free for you. So when you arrive, you've got gas and the remainder of the elk that you've sent in that new chain. We got one question remaining after number nine. Pedro still in first. Talon moving up to second place here. Late in the game, followed by David, Lynn, and Monstro back on scoreboard here, top five, going into the final question. Is everybody ready? Monstro, you're ready, my man. He is focused. He is, he is focused. <laughs> um, no time to un no, no time to unmute here. Okay, it increases over time until reaching a hundred percent after a certain number of days. Is it twenty-one days, forty days, ninety days, or three hundred sixty-five days? Forty days is the correct answer. So the most common guess here is ninety days. It is in fact forty days. I think this in permanent loss protection is one of the coolest things. When I was doing the research through for the vid in the past, I found this really interesting. As soon as you're in the farm, day one. After after day one, you've got 2.5% coverage of your impermanent loss. So if you deposit and after the first day you withdraw, you've had a little bit of impermanent loss, I'm um, going to say $10 worth of impermanent loss in the pair, 2.5% coverage of that, like 25 cents if I'm doing my math right in my head after a couple beers here. Each day is 2.5%. So 2.5% times 40 is 100%. So if you stay consistently in the farm for 40 days, you're going to have 100% coverage of any loss that you incur at any point in the future. I know people might be interested if they're looking into this when the next series of Moose NFTs might go up for sale, or I don't know, how, how do you all run it on the Elk platform? I, I wasn't able to participate the last time you had to run. So we announce it through all of our socials. Right before we're ready to launch or we have a, a moose sale and it's right there on the website. Whatever chain we're doing the sale on, there'll be a moose tab and you go into the moose tab at the time that it's ready, the mint button will appear. You click mint and uh, boom, you've got yourself a moose. What do you think, Pedro? Should we check out the final score? Yeah. And here we go, folks. At the end of 10 questions here, end of the game, here is our podium in third place with a little over 7,000 points. We got Blin. Congratulations, Blin. Very close with three points. <laughs> Monstro. He was Monstro ready. in second place. What? And then Pedro. So Wait, actually, that means Monstro won. Actually, that actually means Monstro. Monstro. Mert is also on the podium. Jad in fourth place. So, yes, Blin got second place. I just wanted to kick some people's asses just for fun. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> what the there heck happened to everybody on the very last question? I went from fifth <laughs> to first. <laughs> Man, I tried to answer on T. Wells' shared screen and it didn't click. <laughs> That's a Monstro mistake right there. That's something. <laughs> Normally do. 85 players that is yeah that's a that's definitely a new record we had 59 was a previous record we had here so 85 active contestants here and it will show so we have the whole print thanks for the great questions guys those are challenging i'm gonna have to move a little closer to the transatlantic cable to get faster response times i think david would like to know what a bull elk sounds like in the rut i'll give you guys that pleasure in just a minute here <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it kind of reminds me of like some sci-fi movie 
<laughs> like alien uh, sounds. It's great to meet everybody here. Great to meet you, Pedro, in particular, man. I'm glad you were able to join us and help everybody learn this game. And we look forward to continually working together. We've got another game in two weeks, folks. And everybody have an excellent weekend. Cheers, everybody.